On today's photo moment, we are celebrating the big 10K and also welcoming my friend, developer Nick Bott, to show off his latest app, Raw Power, for iOS. Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first thrice weekly live show here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific at youtube.com slash photo Joseph, where we talk about all kinds of things, photography, video, live streaming related. If it's got a camera related to it in one way or another, it's fair game. Like today's show, which is all about this new app called Raw Power, where I actually have the developer here on the show standing by, so we're going to bring him in in just a minute. But before I do, <laughs> okay, that's not, uh, we'll come to this. We're going to come to this at the end of the show, but I I got 10K. I hit 10K subscribers. Like, look, we're going to celebrate. We got the tasty beverage, but that's going to be later. We don't want to do that before the main part of the show because that wouldn't be fair to our guest. But um, we are going to celebrate. We're going to open this up later on today. So um, before we get into the meat of it, I've got a couple of things that I do want to announce and share and just remind you of a whole bunch of stuff, actually. So we're going to run through these really quickly here. First off, I've got a promo going on right now where you can get a free pair of Bose headphones. If you are a traveler for business, you go to upside.com. You use a the bonus code or the uh, the the code, whatever it's called, called Bose Photo Joseph, and that will get you free Bose headphones. Uh, just uh, there's a video you can link to or that we've linked to. You can click on that up here and you can check out the video, talk all about the whole thing. But it's an awesome travel website for business travelers, for small business travelers. I love it. I've been using it now and it's fantastic. And I've worked out a deal with them where you guys can get these free Bose headphones. Pretty sweet on that. Also on there, also another thing to talk about, I'm going to B&H on December 7th. If you're going to be in New York on December 7th, come see me from 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to be talking about live streaming, the stuff that we're doing right here on the show, featuring Epifan hardware. And of course, if you can't be there live, then you can tune in and see it streamed live. Go figure. Um, it's a live streaming show that will be streamed live. And you can get to that easily by just going to photojoseph.com slash BH or go to the BH event page and find that. Since I'm going to be in New York, I'm going to do a little meetup. This is on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash photojoseph or just quickly get to it by typing in photojoseph.com slash New York City. That's going to be on December 7th from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, on uh, That's obviously Eastern time for that. Immediately following that, on December 9th, I'll be in Indianapolis at Robert's Camera from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. doing a presentation about photography, my photography specifically, my use of the Micro Four Thirds cameras. And then later in that afternoon, we're doing another little meetup. Again, just photojoseph.com slash IND will take you there. That's December 9th from 5 to 7 p.m. If you missed any of this, of course, you can just back up in the video or scroll down to the links below and we'll have all the information, all the links to that. But free headphones, New York b &H, New York meetup. Robert's camera in Indianapolis, Indianapolis meetup, and that's what's going on in December. I'm going to keep telling you about that because there's a lot going on. It's exciting stuff. Okay, let's get into the show, shall we? I am going to, let me switch this screen up, get this all set up properly. Nick, you are about to come on the air. I hope you're uh, you're awake over there. Let um, Go ahead and bring him on, Ryan, and let's bring you, because it's the right split up here, onto the show. Here we go. There it is. Haha, -ha, I got the right switcher. Yeah. Nick, <laughs> welcome. I had to find the right button there. Good morning, Nick. Welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. It's great to have you on. So Nick Bot is an old friend of mine. He is the former, let's see if I got this right, chief architect? Was that? The, did I get that? Do I remember that right? Uh, There's many different titles. Many different titles. Uh, so I was a senior director of engineering at Apple, uh, the C uh, at, in the uh, photo apps group, uh, the CTO in the photo apps group, a uh, lot of different roles. I was there for about 14 years, so that's a long time. A lot of different, yeah, a lot of hats. So the main the main reason we bring up that pedigree is because it kind of has to do a little bit with what he's working on today. Uh, he was working on Aperture. So for those who loved Aperture, this was the man, and is he's not the man who killed it. So we've no. had this conversation before. Yeah, he's not the man who killed it. Don't blame him for going away. <laughs> Absolutely not Nick's fault or decision or anything like that. Uh, right. But uh, Nick is now independent. He has started a company called Gentleman Coders. He he launched an app called Raw Power on Mac OS, so what was it, a year ago? Yeah, yeah, almost. Okay, a year ago, and just this week launched a version of it on iOS, Raw Power on iOS. And from there, I'm going to let Nick take over and tell us a little bit about the app, give us an overview of what it is, and then, of course, we're going to get into a demo of it. Okay, great, yeah. So, um, as you mentioned, there's the Mac version of the application. It's a standalone app and a photo extension. Uh, and so... Uh, People have asked me a lot for uh, an iOS version of that app and started thinking about that, but noticed there's a lot of image editors out there. And so I want to do something a little different. 
and looked at the technology Apple has been building uh, recently. And there's a lot of interesting things out there. So for example, there's iCloud Photo Library. Sure. There's the photo framework on iOS. Uh, and they added RAW to iOS as well in iOS 10. And so, and RAW on iOS actually supports hundreds of cameras. It's actually got all the same support that exists for RAW on the Mac. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the, so it's, it's actually quite, uh, quite uh, complete. And so looking at that, there seemed like a good opportunity to build on top of all of those technologies and do something distinctive. Okay. So that's what uh, raw power for iOS is. It's not just bringing raw power for the Mac onto iOS. It does a lot more. So it's the mm-hmm. first app that lets you edit raw, but also give you full access to your iOS photo library and iCloud photo library. And, and as when I show you the demo, you get a sense for why, why I say that. So this is this is a big deal because you don't have to send your photo from the Photos app over to another app where you edit it and then send it back again. You're actually accessing it as if you were the Photos app. You're just a different right. You're just an app that is accessing the exact same library that Photos itself is. Right. And now there's a lot of apps out there that let you, for example, look at the photo library and you know go through and pick an image and edit it or something like right. that. But this is more. This actually gives you a whole front end to your library so you can organize and do things like that with it. So that's why I say it's something more than just uh, a raw editor, or just something that lets you pick a single image. Okay. So if you were to uh, you create an album, move photos around in an album from within right. your app, you're going to see that reflected in Photos app because you're affecting the library. Exactly. So it's not a separate library and it is not a separate cloud. It is iCloud. It is the iOS photo app. So everything that you do in raw power for iOS is pushed into the iOS photo library automatically, which means that everything you do is instantly available to every other app uh, on the platform. And if you use iCloud to all of your devices at the same time too. That's so fantastic. It's, it really gives you that flexibility that, that kind of has been missing. And this, I know we talked about this before. This is not some secret API thing that you've dug into. This is a this is an API that's open for anybody, but you're the first developer, as far as I know, that has taken advantage of this. Yeah, exactly. Right. There's there's no there's no uh, you know secret sauce, no anything like that. This mm-hmm. is actually all public stuff. It's all available. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm the first one to actually get to the point of being wow. able to uh, provide this functionality. Very cool. Okay, so um, for everybody watching, one of the nice little surprises that we have is we have five codes. So the, the raw power is a free download with a in-app purchase, a nine ninety nine purchase. Is that right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So ten dollar purchase, which gives you more functionality. We have right. five codes to give away, and we're going to do this intermittently throughout the show. And so the way that you can take advantage of this is to go ahead and get the app downloaded on your device and ready to go. And then when we put it up on screen, whoever can type it in the fastest is going to get it. And I know it's a bit vicious, but that's the way it's going to be. So I'm going to bring up that first code in just a moment here. So for anybody out there who has got raw power ready to go, if you don't know how to do a uh, access the code or use one of these free codes, you basically go into the App Store and uh, tap on the icon of you, your kind of the the me icon, whatever up there, and you're going to see a redeem code. That's where you do it. You're not actually doing it from within the app, so you got to do it from there. I don't know if you have to have the app downloaded first or not. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'm not sure. I actually don't know. Well, there you go. See, it's a mystery, and only those who can type the fastest will find out. So um, (laughs) with that said, let's just go ahead and bring up that very first code. So this is code number one. We'll leave it up on screen for a few moments. And obviously, if you're not watching live, then uh, there's no way you're going to get access to this, I'm sorry to say. But for those who are watching live, you are going to get to have a chance. Um, with that to get said, this. Ooh, let's whoops. just go ahead Hold and on. bring oh, up that very... stop. There we go. Whew, sorry about that. We had a little loop going on there. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave this up for just a moment. I'm going to take a quick look over at the comments, at the chit-chat in here. And I'm going to say that is enough on screen. You guys obviously could be grabbing a screenshot of that. But I think by the time you grab a screenshot, it might be too late. So um, just type in as fast as you can. Let's see what's going on here. Um, anything else going on in the chat room on here? Yeah, again, if you're seeing any stutters, do let us know live. And if you have questions for Nick, put them into the chat, put them into the comments like always. And I am monitoring both on Facebook and on YouTube here. And um, Facebook one's a little bit harder to read, but I can see it there. If you have a question for Nick, tag me. Put at photo Joseph so it comes up nice and big and red on my screen like you see. I always forget which way to point there, like you see there. And then that way I will know what the question is and I can relay that to Nick. I can't bring all of us on screen at once because you don't worry about it. Anyway, just put your question in there and we'll get it on there. So hopefully somebody grabbed that code. Now that code can only be used by one of you. Let's make sure that you guys understand how this works. That code that I just put up on screen, only one person can use it. So it's whoever types it in the fastest and hits go will redeem that code. Uh, if, once you, if you type it in and somebody else has already redeemed it, no bueno, no luck, sorry, you don't get it. But 
There's going to be four more chances throughout this show. Also, uh, whoever does get the code, type into the chat. Tell us who got it. That would be cool. And um, just in case for some reason nobody got it because nobody said anything there yet, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this up here one more time. Let's bring it up like this. Oop, wrong one. Let's bring this up here. Bring up that code. And that way, uh, if you didn't, if nobody got it, this is your last chance. And... It's, oops, wrong screen. God, one of these days I will figure out all my codes. Oh, I know, because I switched pages. Ha, there we go. This is the problem with doing this on my own. It is just way, way too many buttons to push. Okay, Nick, are you ready to start giving us a little demo of the app? Yes, Okay. absolutely. We've got it fired up over here on screen share. We are looking at your iPad first. Is that correct? Yes. All right, let's bring it up. So this is Nick's iPad. Um, sorry, the, the bar at the top is a new Skype thing. Sorry about that, guys. And Skype went and changed everything last night. So um, let me just move my mouse out of the way and let the screen come back. And Nick, take it away. There's buffering. Apparently there's buffering happening in the stream. Um, well... I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. We're, not, we're seeing a good quality stream from this end, so we're just going to um, continue. Tell everybody to refresh their screens and hope for the best. Um, and if, the, if it continues, then go ahead and kill the Facebook feed. All right, Nick, go ahead. Take it away. All right. So, um, so this app is basically intended for photo enthusiasts and pros, people who want raw editing, uh, be able to see photo metadata, and get more features than you get in the basic photo app. Okay. Um, but you don't want to give up integrations. You want, you want the ease of use that comes from having the system photo library and everything, as I mentioned, available to all the apps on, on your platform. Sure. Uh, if you're already using iCloud, it's great for that as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start here with some, uh, well, I'm going to show you organizational tools, a little bit about metadata, editing, uh, and then show you what it looks like on an iPhone, because as you mentioned, this is an iPad. Right. This library came originally from a Mac. Um, it's got about 4,000 pictures. This is uh, the built-in photo app, of course. Right. So it's 4,000 images um, synced over iCloud, originated from a Mac. So you can see these are the built-in albums, and then you know there's a small set of, uh, of albums here as well. All right, so now I'm going to go and bring up Raw Power. So it launches up, and there it is. Okay, so now uh, Raw Power, um, again, gives you access to everything in the photo library. At the top are recents. And so the first thing is something called recently viewed. And recently viewed are images that you have recently edited or shared or just looked at for a few seconds. This is something that always drives me crazy that I found a picture, showed it to somebody, and then maybe the next day or something like that, I'm looking for the picture again and I can't find it. I so is this recently viewed from within Raw Power or recently viewed even from within the Photos app? No, recently viewed inside Raw Power. Okay. So because of sandboxing, you know, each app doesn't know what the other app is. Right, doing. right. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Then also here, there are four albums that I also recently looked at, and so they're up at the top. So the idea is just to make things that you access frequently just quick to get to. Okay. So that's these things right here. Got it. Then you got your built-in albums, the same built-in albums that you would see in photos, um, all photos. And then my albums, where are the albums that I have. Now, these are all the albums in the library flattened, so there's actually about 300 of them in this in this library. So this is this is something I've seen before. If you put your albums inside of a folder inside of in photos, mm -hmm. some apps show this to you flattened, and you're going, well, "Hold on a second, I, I wanted to see them. I put them into a folder for a reason so that I can right. find them easier later." Um, is this a, a it's a decision that a developer can make, or is this something that Apple forces that you have to view it in a flat uh, flat system? Um, the hierarchy is something which actually I think got added recently. So it used to be just flat. And actually, I plan to add a hierarchical option to raw power okay, good. to have both options. The, the, there's, there's pluses and minuses to the flat view. I mean, when, when you've got a hierarchy, especially on a touchscreen like this, you tend to get lost a lot, kind of going down layer by layer. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag, but mm. I'm going to have offer both abilities. That's good. Yeah. Because I, I mean, the, as a user, view, yeah. yeah, as a right. user, I've, if I've organized them into a hierarchy, that's because I want yes. them in a hierarchy. And if I have, if, if, exactly. yeah. okay, so here I'm going to switch. Apparently people are not finding where to enter the code. So, um, and no one's figured that out yet. So let me do this. I'm going to bring up my iPhone and I'll show you guys where to do this. And because I did this myself yesterday, so I can show you how. So go into the App Store. Uh, let's see here. I need to bring up a screen to do this. Here we go. Go into the App Store. And up in the top right corner, you see the picture of you, yourself. Tap on that. And then it says right there in the middle, redeem gift card or code. Tap on that. It opens up a window. 
and there you go. You're gonna have to enter your Apple ID, so you might wanna go ahead and do that now and get that prepped and ready to go, and once you've signed in, the next window will be uh, able to redeem that code. So that's where you do that. So um, for, since no one has found that yet, we will go ahead and bring up that first code one more time here, just for anybody who might be trying to type that in right this very second. So there's that code, that's where you do it. I'm sorry that we wasn't clear earlier on where to find that thing, but that is where it is. So hopefully now one of you guys can grab that thing and we're gonna pull this off screen in three, two, one. We're back to you, Nick. All right, okay. so let's switch back to your app here. Uh, so great, that's great to know about the hierarchical thing. Hopefully that's yeah. something you'll be able to implement because it is, yes. uh, it is significant. Okay, Absolutely. go for it. Okay, so uh, also in this view, uh, so there's a menu at the upper left. There's a plus button lets you create albums. You can also tap the select button and you can go and delete or rename albums. So that's what I mentioned. It's not just picking a single image. You can actually manipulate the library. Right, here. very cool. Um, at the upper left also, there's a search. So I can, for example, just type zoo or something like that and quickly search and find albums based on title. Now, is that, Art, okay, is that going to be just the albums based on title or is it going to use... Apple's um, artificial intelligence, and if you type in sunset, it'll find pictures of a sunset. Unfortunately, that stuff's not available to third parties yet. So oh, okay. that's one of the, yeah, one of the problems is that a lot of the things that have been added recently to the Photos application have not been added as APIs that are accessible to developers. Got it, okay. So I've done all the things that, that have been made available, and I've been asking Apple to add some of those features that they have in their applications as API into uh, iOS so developers like me can take advantage of it. Okay, got it. Okay, so let me uh, tap uh, all photos here. And so you bring up, and so all the photos come up quickly. And uh, as you uh, scroll, as I scroll through this, you'll see you get, a, you, uh, get a date overlay. These are some old photos. Oh, nice. And so it gives you a nice kind of navigational view of where you are in, in a big long list. Okay. Uh, here as well, you can, there's, in the upper right corner, there's an arrow that lets you sort ascending or descending. Well, you can also you can, pick. In the upper right corner, there's a Sorry, go ahead. That was me. Go ahead. Uh, and also you can, uh, there's a tap, a, a select button. You can tap things like that to uh, share, rename, or things like that. Um, okay. So uh, I'll also bring your attention to the upper left corner here. There's a, a little I button. I'm going to tap that. And that brings up an inspector. So something that I really want to uh, improve about the experience that you have with the, the built-in app is the tendency you have to move back and forth between views. So you're in a album, go back to the all albums back, 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 back. So instead there's an actual uh, inspector here, a sidebar, that gives you access to those recents, built-in albums and all your other albums. So they're okay. right here. Nice. Now this sidebar is also movable. And since I happen to be left-handed, I tend to move it. So I'll have to drag it over and put it on the left cool. here. Okay, so um, I'd mentioned uh, creating albums in the lab that's available in the last screen. It's also available here. So I'm gonna press this little plus button here. I'm gonna type in. So again, we're now manipulating the actual iCloud yes. database right now. So Absolutely. Cool. So that has now been actually saved into the iOS photo library. There's a new album there called My New Album. Okay. And I'm going to tap on this uh, container right here, Images to Edit. So I can just switch to different albums really easily right from here without having to go back and forth. Now, I can add images to albums as well using the drag and drop feature built in iOS 11. Now, the way mm -hmm. you do that is you tap and hold on an image like this one, move it a little bit. And then you can just kind of tap other images. That's great. And then you just drag it right over there and it's in. So now, now you see that it says my new album. There's a little thumbnail there and an account. So it's added three images to a new album. All of that has been um, put into the iOS photo library. And since it's iCloud, it'll get, it gets synced across iCloud to my other devices. Right. So that's all has happened now just by doing that. That is really cool. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. So now let's go into the uh, the, the, the one-up view. So I'll tap on that picture you just saw a second ago. And uh, so this image, if I tap on info, gives me metadata. So I get the file name, flash status, file type, shooting information, date, time, camera, and a map with place. So shot in Bryce. Uh, I'm going to go to another image here, and this one right here. So this is a raw. So this is an Olympus raw. And... Uh, I'm going to adjust it. So I'm going to, you can tap either the edit button in the upper right corner. You can see favoriting is there as well. So you can mm -hmm. favorite in this app and that of course favorites in the library. So tap the edit button here. And now it's going to load, decode that raw. So it's now decoded the raw. By the way, you can zoom in up to 800% in this application. So you can zoom in really, really far. That's quite a bit. That's more than photos na app natively does, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, photos, in fact, photos when you edit can't zoom at all. 
Um, oh, we're oh, oh, here. <laughs> Small details. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you can zoom in one up, of course. Now, let me give you a quick tour of the editing tool. So go ahead. Before, all, you, before you do the yes. tour there. Um, so we, we're I'm monitoring the chat elsewhere. It turns out someone did get that first code. So someone has figured this Great. out. We got that first code. So I think now is a good chance to give away the second code because, hey, why not do that now before we get into the actual demo of the of the editing tool? So here we go. Here's that second code for you. So for those of you who are lickety split quick on your fingers, type that number in there into that place that we showed you earlier. So again, if you're trying to figure out where that is, you go to the app store in the top right corner, click on the icon that that is you and log in. It'll ask you to log in. There's going to be a redeem code button. Type this code in and away you go. And again, only one person can get this. So whoever types it the fastest is who is going to redeem that code. And if you get it, Gloat, tell us about it. Tell us in the chat room. We want to hear about it there. Alrighty, let's go back to this and bring up your screen again. And as soon as this is ready, we'll put you back up. And there you go. You're off. Okay, great. So um, this, these are all of the same editing tools that are in raw power for the Mac. So every single adjustment, every slider, everything's the same between the two applications uh, from an editing standpoint. So I'll give you a, a little view at the top. So at the top, there's a there's a menu. The menu gives you things like um, rotation, flip, controls, copy and paste of adjustments. There's help for every single adjustment as well. Then you've got a histogram. So you've got the histogram, and next to that are these four circles. These are called live clipping indicators. And what they tell you is whether or not you have clipped data, which is you know overexposed or greater than one data in any channel. Okay. So the first one, the gray one, indicates that you have clipped uh, channel, so something clipped somewhere. Something somewhere. In any okay. red, green, or blue. And then the other ones, red, green, or blue, indicate that you're clipped in a specific channel. So you can tell, oh, I'm clipped in red or green or blue. And you can decide okay. based on that if you want to maybe work with curves or something like that to manipulate that. Got it. Now, those are also controls. I can tap on them. So when I tap on the, the, the first one, I get a hot pixel overlay. So this is familiar to people who used Aperture. This is the hot pixel overlay. It looks very much the same. You got red for overexposed, uh, and you got blue for black. So these are zero in all channels. Okay. These are live. So as I manipulate, for example, exposure, you'll see this stuff immediately comes and goes. Got it. Okay. This button next to tone is actually a Photoshop style overlay, which for people who are familiar with that, it kind of gives you this which channels are by, draw, oh, by yeah. drawing colors. So red means you're clipped in red, yellow means you're clipped in red and green. So it gives you a lot of detail there. It can be a little hard to read, but if you, but if you understand it, it can be- uh, Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now uh, we mentioned the, the overexposed data and I would bring exposure down so you can see just how much actual data is in those waves. There's a lot of detail that mm -hmm. is being lost. So what people would typically do with an image like this is they might use something like recovery or highlights. And if you do that, as I do this now, you can see you actually get some data back in, in those ways. You get some detail back. If you look in the upper right corner, there's a show original button. You, you can see the difference here. And I got some detail back, but it's, it's not great. It's nothing like what I saw before. A little muddy. Okay. The, the reason for that is because um, of, of Apple's raw processing. And so now... I'll, I'll take that to kind of uh, go through the adjustments some more. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. So at the top, there's cropping. So there's a crop tool, straightening. You can straighten by drawing a line, uh, aspect ratios, all that kind of stuff is mm -hmm. there. Uh, raw processing, that's the heart of the application. So that's what gives you access to all of the controls that sit within Apple's raw engine. So Apple's raw engine is on iOS. It decodes the images and produces a nice result by default, but they also provide a large number of basically uh, uh, parameters that let you change how it decodes the image. And mm -hmm. so I've exposed all of those in raw power. So these so are thing. these are commands, controls that are within the raw engine that Apple has developed, but they have not exposed. They have not allowed the user to access these. That's correct. And, and so the built-in photo app on iOS doesn't decode RAWs at all. If you have a raw image in the built-in photo app, it actually will get the embedded JPEG out of that and edit that instead. So it, really? it can, it, oh, absolutely. It's, it's never done that. It's never supported. <laughs> I it, did it not know has. that. It only no does, kidding. yeah, it only does the embedded JPEG. So, so this wow. image, okay. if you looked at this image in the built-in photo app, you'd see something that looked like it, but it would be a JPEG and that's how it would work. Wow. Okay. Okay. Right. That's huge. So, I did not realize that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the things, if you just have Ross in your library, you can't adjust them with, 
uh, as a raw at all, like wow. ignoring the presence of raw processing, you can't recover highlights. You can't do anything huh. with uh, the built-in app. Huh. Good to know. So, oh, look at that. Learn something every day. But okay. this allows you to do that. Yeah. So raw processing gives you, as you said, these are these are the, the essentially the, the the hooks or the parameters into Apple's uh, engine, and so Boost uh, and Black Boost. Those are things that we call sort of the look of the image. Raws, when they're if you just bring up a raw by itself, they're kind of flat looking. And so all raw, all, all basically companies that build raw decoders have their own kind of special look where they maybe improve contrast or adjust color, make it more vivid, you mm-hmm. know, to make it look nice, essentially. It's their recipe. If they're res- exactly the recipe. And so that's a control you can actually uh, adjust, which is the amount of how much that recipe is being. How much salt are you going to add to that? Basically? Yeah, I always liken this to giving the same ingredients to 10 different chefs. And every chef is going to make, you know, say here, here's the ingredients, make a cake, make a cookie, whatever, make something. And they're all going to make the same dish, but it's all going to be a little bit different, even though they are all using the exact same ingredients. And that's what right. raw is with a raw decoder. You're handing over yes. the exact same raw file, but 10 different raw decoders are going to give you a different, 10 different results because of how that chef, that raw decoder, has decided to interpret those, those, uh, that data or those ingredients. Yeah, that's a great analogy. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah, cool. Uh, so Apple provides these uh, controls. Other companies would, may provide other controls because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're cooking it different. Right. Uh, black point is a bias. It basically makes the image darker or lighter. Basically, you can kind of see that. That's the floor, black floor of the image. There's three noise reduction sliders, uh, a, a capture sharpener, which is fairly subtle, but but does does sharpen, and raw contrast, which is a type of local contrast. The last one is interesting called gamut map. Gamut mapping is, so when colors go out of range, they're super saturated, then um, what Apple's raw engine does is it brings them back into the color space uh, that it works in, into what's called gamut. And uh, it does a nice job of that, but sometimes you might just want them to be clipped or you might want to work with them yourself and manipulate the saturation yourself, in which case you can turn off Apple's gamut mapping and you're basically removing that stage from Apple's processing so hmm. that you do it yourself. Okay. This is something that I added that wasn't in the original raw power I added more recently. Okay. Uh, there's white balance with a live sampler. Again, you don't have white balance in the built-in photo app. It can't right. white balance at all and can't sample. Um, I, I briefly went over tone. Uh, <clears throat> some basic adjustments for brightness contrast. There's a full curve we'll get to in a second and a nice simple sharpener. Nice. Okay. So uh, for that image, we tried recovery. We tried highlights. It did a little bit, but not enough. The reason is boost. Boost is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it tends to make images brighter. When you have an image that's already bright and you try to bring down uh, little things like the highlights, not the whole image, but highlights, Boost has a tendency to make it brighter again. So you end up fighting Boost and not getting anywhere. Oh, interesting. So I'm going to bring Boost down just a little bit. Not the, I could bring it down all the way, but it gets flat. So I'm going to bring it halfway, which means, hey, Apple, do some of your uh, look stuff, but don't do it all because I'm going to do my own stuff. Here. Okay. So now I'm just going to bring over recovery just, and that's all I'm going to do. Bring, bring recovery across. And you can see how much detail I just got back just by moving recovery and go, go back to the original here. Because you're not fighting boost. Mm. I'm not fighting boost anymore. So now recovery can do its job essentially of just selectively bringing down the bright parts of the pixels without having boost uh, push it right back up again. Excellent. And I didn't lose much brightness either. I mean, I can do a little bit with, say, shadows or a little bit with vibrancy. And then now I've done that, and I haven't really lost that brightness, but all that detail came back really, really quickly. Uh, at the top, I should also mention next to the show original, there's undo and redo, of course, okay, sure. something that's there. Um, I hit done. And now this this prompt says allow raw photo to modify. This comes from Apple itself. Right. It's, a, it's just a, a protection that makes sure that you – are agreeing to modify an image. And it will do that for every image. That's just Apple's rules. Right, right. Yeah, we've seen that before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so now that, no second. question before you want, so now that you've modified that image, we're seeing it, it we've saved it into photos or photos have said, are, right. you, are you okay with saving it? When I go into photos, because photos isn't going to do a raw decode anyway, is there now a new JPEG that photos is editing? So if I go into photos and I just do a, open another filter or crop in photos, whatever, I am manipulating now a JPEG Correct, because you yes okay, so 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 yes, I, I should have explained that. So what's happening is when that image gets saved, so everything in raw power is fully non-destructive, so your the original is never touched, it's never modified. Right. So what's happening is when when I hit that done button and save the image, then raw power does two things. 
it saves the adjustment data as basically a little like a blob of data and hands it to the photo library, which stores it. And then it makes a full size JPEG of the rendering and, and gives that to uh, iOS and iOS stores that in the library. Now, every application has access to that full size JPEG. If you want to do additional editing of that image, you want to use some kind of special black and white filter, for example, or something like that, you would be working on the JPEG at that point. Okay. At okay. any point, you can go back and revert that image. You can go to photos, for example, go into mm -hmm. edit, tap revert, and it will revert it and bring you right back to where you started with the original. So, so nothing is ever modified the original. Everything's always safe. Okay, got it. And I think this is a really important point to point out that when you make this change in here in Raw Power, you said it's giving you a full-size JPEG. Because earlier you'd said that when you're looking at the raw file within Photos itself, it's using the embedded JPEG. And what I think a lot of people don't realize is that embedded JPEG may not be full resolution. Yeah, Most, exactly. Yep. Only, in general, only the highest end DSLRs will make an embedded JPEG that is the full resolution. Most cameras make one that's half the resolution or even smaller, and that's what's embedded in. So if you are shooting with a 30 megapixel camera and your camera is only generating a half size JPEG, then you're working with something a lot smaller inside of photos before you can, um, when you start editing it. So, but if you do it here, you go into raw power first, make those changes, save it back. Now you've got a full size JPEG to work with. That's an excellent point. Yes, that's, that's exactly what's happening. And the embedded JPEGs really do uh, you lose a ton of resolution for most cameras, exactly as you said. Wow. Okay. All right. Good okay. to know. All right. Let's uh, let's do one more code before we move on to the next one. So for those of you who are gagging for these free codes, get your uh, get your typing fingers ready. We're going to bring that up in just a second here. Also, lots of uh, great comments going on here. We will switch over to the comment room in a moment here and take a look at those. But for right now, let's take a look at the next free code and see what we've got there. So go ahead and keep on typing while you're typing that. Nick, I'm going to ask you a question that's coming up in the chat room here. Oh, and Jess sure. Smith, congratulations, Jess. You got the second code. Awesome. Uh, Trevor's asking, does Nick foresee expanding the functionality of the apps to include layers? It seems a lot of apps avoid this functionality, but it has serious appeal to pros and advanced amateurs. So Nick, what say you to that? Can you do layers with their... Well, well not layers in the in the standard Photoshop style. Since each adjustment is individually applied, right. you can turn them on and off. So you, I, I've certainly seen iOS apps where each stage is essentially sort of a destructive stage, where right. the next output is that. Uh, whereas this one, it's always starting from the from the original and applying the images. So you can turn on and off adjustments. There's a little. Uh, checkbox next to every adjustment. So maybe an alternative off. to layers in there that would give Trevor what he's looking for is the ability to brush each one of those adjustment bricks, for lack of a better term. So your right. brightness brick or exposure brick, whatever, just to say, okay, I want to do this, but I really only want to do this to the brightest part of the waves, and then be able to make that adjustment and brush it in, paint it in. Yeah, and, and brushing is something that, that uh, I think is super valuable and super important. So it's something that I'd like to get to, okay. uh, but... Uh, Boy, there's a lot of features I need to add. At I this know. Point. Well, yeah, that's always the way, isn't it? I've got a, it's it's the length of my arm or to both arms or something like that. There's there's a lot that that can be done, and uh, but I, I but I agree. Uh, yeah. I mean, Aperture's brushing was actually very good, and uh, it's it's something that I think. Uh, well, you probably wrote an application it, right? like this so. could. Uh, <laughs> I had something to do with it. But, uh, I didn't. I didn't write it all. No. So, you know, okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's jump back over to the app then. Go for okay, it. Okay. So let me jump to another image here. So this one right here. This. Uh, the Sandpiper here. This is a, a 21 megapixel uh, 5D Mark II image. Okay. And so I'll jump in and tap the adjust. That's another way of entering edit. Now, uh, quickly look at, you'll see in the histogram, you'll see only this uh, the gray and the blue lit up. And so just to mention how those clipping indicators work, uh, that means that I'm, I have some overexposed pixels, but they're only in the blue channel because oh. only the blue lit is lit up. So that's kind of an example. The other one was white, so it's always all three channels. But this one actually has a bluish cast to it, so um, you, you can see you can see in the pixels that that that, that just gives you an indication of where perhaps sure. your overexposed data is. Okay. All right. So let me jump down to curves here. So this is a, a very full fledged curves implementation. It has, of course, all the individual channels. You can see these are all the individual channels here. Um, it's got samplers, live samplers for black, white, gray, target points, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you tap on. Uh, Tap on the curve to add a point. You double tap to delete a point. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do here is so just use the auto function, which is to tap this these uh, these circles here, and I'll tap that one. And what that does is it auto RGB corrects. Okay. If you look at the curve, you'll see these lines appeared here, red, green, and blue. So it shifted the image. It corrected for color casts in the image, as well as adding contrast to the image at the same time. And so if we go through that, you'll see how the how the the curves have all kind of changed here. 
Um, now, in this options area in the middle here, you'll see it says gamma and equal RGB. Those are super advanced um, curves options here. So what gamma and RGB, what gamma does is it switches between a linear curve and a gamma corrected curve. So if you have, most people are used to gamma corrected curves because that's how our eyes work. Okay. But if you have a raw, you have a lot of linear data because gamma squashes the bright parts of, of images, you might want to work in linear space and then you just hit the linear button and off you go. The second one is really cool, equal RGB. If you tap on that, it switches to luminance. And so this is, this means the gray curve is now a Luma curve. If you have gone and looked at some of the more advanced Photoshop books, what they'll often tell you to do is don't work with equal grays because it tends to uh, accentuate color casts because it's moving all the red, green, blue channels equally. Okay. You want to work in luminance. Well, so what you do in Photoshop, for example, is you would take the whole image, go into Photoshop, convert to LAB, make a curve, get it done, and then convert back to RGB. It's extremely time-consuming, and it's hard to make additional iterations. Right. Here, you just tap the luminous button, and you're done. What it does is it takes the image, and as it's processing it, turns to LAB, moves the luminous channel, and then moves it back out. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's it's a really great way to get nice results with luminance if you just tap that button. But again, it's not what people expect as their default use of curves. That's why it's not the default. Is there any kind of uh, guidance on when you would use one over the other, or is it really just a case of whatever works for that image? Try them all and see what work, gives you the best results. For, you know, for luminance, I find that it's something I try to go back and forth on because depending on the image or what I'm doing to the image, I find that I want to switch that and kind of see what the results are. Okay. I think some people have a preference on how they work and they're always going to work one way or the okay. other way. But for me, I find it's nice to just try that and see what I get out of it. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, and I'll do another thing, which is crop. So I can bring up crop and then I'm going to tap the little crop tool here. You'll see that there's uh, on the left here, there's a little uh, overlay with a megapixel rating. So I put hmm. that in because I like to know the number of megapixels I've left after cropping. Right, right. It's really easy to overcrop. So I'm just going to do that. You see the megapixel number change. Oh, nice. Okay. That. I've got rule of thirds, guys. Hit OK. It's cropped it. Hit done. And I've saved it. Now, let me go into one last image here. This one is very different. This is a JPEG, and it is an iPhone 7 Plus uh, image shot with a dual camera. Oh, OK. All right. Now, raw power is really useful for things other than just raws, despite the name. So it works, obviously, with JPEGs and PNGs. And as we mentioned, because the built-in photo app doesn't have a lot of things like white balance, like sharpening uh, and things like that, it's really curves. Um, you can use this thing to adjust your other images as well and get really nice results with all the integration benefits you get with the app. Okay. Now, but this is a special image. This is, a, this is an image with depth in it. So when I tap adjust here, you're going to see a new adjustment come up here called the depth effect. Oh. So this is new. Now, the depth effect actually is now on both iOS and on the Mac OS version. The, there's a new Mac OS raw power 1.3, and the depth effect is present there as well. Okay. Because it's the same, I put everything on both platforms uh, at the same time. So let's look at this image. So this flower uh, has depth information. You can see the blur in the background. I'm going to, what I what this depth effect lets you do is manipulate the highlights and the shadows of the background and foreground independently. What? So what I'm going to do... Oh, that's yes. so cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by moving the shadow slider. Now, you'll see the whole image is basically brightening. And the reason is because when the dual camera viewed the image, it basically saw a lot of it as being what it would consider foreground. And what it does is it makes a what's called a depth mask, which shows, which tells it what is foreground and what's background for its own blurring. Well, that mask is actually available to me Okay. And so what I'm going to do, well, I think it's showing up there. It'll go away on its own. There you go. Um, is I'm going to bring up an overlay by tapping that button there. Oh. The upper, next to depth effect. This is the depth mask. Yes. So you can visualize the depth mask in this application. And the last slider is called depth mask. This does not change the appearance of the image itself, but it changes the mask. As I move this slider, you're going to see it get darker. Now, white means the image is foreground, and black means images in the background. As you can see, it's mostly light gray. That's why the shadow slider moved the whole image, sure. because as far as it was concerned, it's kind of all foreground. Makes sense. So I'm going to manipulate the mask. I'm going to turn that down. Not all the way. I'm going to turn it maybe like that. Okay, so now it says, okay, oh, I see. 
the foreground is just that flower. So when I do depth, this depth mask, it doesn't affect the blur. This affects what the what my depth effect is doing. Right. Now when I move the shadow slider, you'll see just the flower and the leaves in the front are changing, but the wow. whole rest of the image is not changing. And I'm going to grab this background highlights and watch the flower in the upper right corner here. Okay. As I do that, color comes back into that. So it doesn't add highlights to the foreground, just to the background. So it's a selectively applied effect of highlights and shadows. That is so cool. Okay. Wow. Thanks. Okay. Now I'm going to save that here and put that away. Okay. So um, this gives you a, a quick tour of this, of the app on the iPad. Okay. I thought I would jump and show you the iPhone. Okay. Um, we can do that next. While uh, you're setting you that up. do then, that, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to another code. Um, before okay. we do the code, though, let me just bring this up here. Um, let me take a look at the chat room. Daddy MCC got the last code. Congratulations, Daddy MCC. And let's see here. I'm going to take a look over at Facebook real quick, see if I can actually read any of this. I'm so tiny on my screen here. And see if there's any questions that have come up in here. Um, Ian Cross is asking in Facebook if the redeem code will work for the desktop version. No, this redeem code is for the iOS version only. And let's see here, a few, uh, few people watching over on Facebook Live. That's great. Oh, Bar- hey, Barham. Barham's an old friend of both of ours. Hey. Uh, Barham says, love the app, Nick. Downloaded it yesterday. Just need OS support for the Nikon D850. Okay, so I guess. Yes, <laughs> no, absolutely. No. Yeah, I've, I, 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 uh, unfortunately, that comes from Apple, but I know that that's something that's very important to them, adding support for... Uh, uh, computers like that. So, so I'm, like I'm, that, yeah. I'm hopeful it'll it'll come soon. No, I don't no exactly doubt. know when, but I'm hopeful it's coming. It'll come no soon. doubt. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the code. So this is code number four right here for those who are waiting for that. Let's see who is going to get it this time. We'll leave that up here for just a moment. Um, in the meantime, Trevor was saying um, that depth mask is a pretty advanced feature on a mobile device. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would say so. I would say so, and it definitely is an advanced feature. Okay. All right, we're going to leave this up for just another moment, moment here. Okay, um, I'm, yeah, I'm still switching. You're still switching over there. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave this on for a minute while Nick is getting the uh, iPhone set up. Let's go ahead and quickly switch back over to the comments here and just see what else, if there's anything else going on over here that I want to address. Let me get that off the screen here. Uh, let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. No other questions coming in. So again, if you have questions that you want me to ask Nick, uh, just pop them up on the screen here. Make sure you put at photo just if you're, if you're on uh, YouTube and on Facebook, just type it in. There's not a whole lot going on over there. So did I reverse Okay, those? so I've got, uh, I've got the phone up now. All right, Nick has got the phone up. Let me get my side of this set up and we will bring this up like so. There we go. Oh, I'm going to zoom into this a little bit, kind of cheat this a sure. little. Yeah, that, that, um, Extra little bar there is definitely not helping things. That is so annoying. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what's this thing we're using? Skype for making changes yesterday. Like last night, all these changes popped up. I go to launch the version this morning. All the setup we did yesterday was just not quite working. I guess I got to go a little bit closer. Okay. I think that's close enough. All right. We all can, right. See, it. Okay. can see it. Obviously a little dark. Oop, but uh, so there we go. So this image right here. So this is raw power um, on iOS for the phone. Okay. And I'll tap on the bottom here. You'll see this is a raw, this is a 22 mega, megapixel raw. Okay. And I'm going to tap the edit button here and um, it's loaded it already. Wow. That was it. It was, it was a fraction of a second. And all the tools are here. The raw tools are here. You can see I've added boost here. I you know I've done recovery. Um, that was the before and after. It's just super fast. This, this, is a, this is a 10. Now I'm going to go to this next image. This is a 36 megapixel D810. <laughs> okay. I'm going to load it. It's done. It's loaded. Now, I'll just give you a quick idea of just, again, what you can do in terms of highlight recovery. I'm going to bring up the histogram here. So Obviously, all four channels, very, are peak, all three channels are peaked. Yes. Out. And the whole thing's blown out, right? Yep. But we're going to do the same trick. We're going to just use boost. We're going to do a little bit of recovery. And then watch how quickly all this goes away. Wow. And so... It's just amazing what you can do uh, by just having access to the internals of RAW's, uh, Apple's RAW. Right. Fantastic. So, wow. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And then when you turn it sideways, and this, this you may not be able to see this very well, but you um, get that interface you saw before. There we go. Yep. So you see that's the D810, as you saw right there. And then you bring up Adjust, and all those, those tools are there as well. So, um, so everything is there uh, on the phone and on the iPad. Um, I should mention, so it runs on the iPhone 6S and later. It runs an iPad mini 4, iPad Air 2 and later. Okay. Uh, and iOS 11. Okay. okay, so I'm going to unplug from this now. All righty. Okay. Um, Let's see. And uh, then, 3Dog got the last code. Congratulations, 3Dog. 
Excellent. All right, so there's one last thing I'd like to show. All righty. Okay, and then I've got to get my, uh, get this thing. Oh, I see, it's. While you're doing that, let's take a quick look over and see if there's anything else over in the comments. So three dog, congratulations. Glad that you were able to get that code. Very okay. cool. So let me, so we're gonna take a one little thing here on the Mac, so, so it's up now. Okay, let's bring the Mac up, all right. All right, and uh, so this is photos on the Mac. And uh, this is the same album. I mentioned it was synced over iCloud. So this is the iCloud photo library on the Mac. And you can see this is one of the albums we we're looking at, the images to edit album. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, uh, I'm going to move this out. It's annoying me. So if you, if you may remember, so this is the sandpiper. We adjust the color on that. Right. This is the cliff. You can maybe see, you probably can't see that, but that's I here. Can see that, so yeah. all those edits have been, have been uh, applied. Now, because raw power is available on the Mac as well, with the same engine and the same adjustment information, there's some compatibility that we can take advantage of. So I'm gonna hit the edit button here and I go to raw power. So this is the raw power extension. So if you're using iCloud photo library on iOS and you wanna access stuff uh, with raw power, you wanna use the extension, not the standalone app. Okay, makes sense. So here we are. And if you look down here, there's the depth effect. And the changes so you what's happened is, right. So we were able to round trip the edits. So I made the changes on iOS, went into Mac Photos, brought up a raw power extension, and the depth effect is there for the same image. And this is all non-destructive. I can turn this stuff on and off and everything is there at the same mm -hmm. and it'll sync everything back through iCloud. So you can start on the Mac, go to iOS or vice versa. Very cool. How much... How much control could you take over those separate layers? You've got the highlight and, and shadow recovery in there, but could you go in and do separate color adjustments and curves and noise reduction and any other number of things and affect the, the mask separately there? Yes, I, I chose to highlights and shadows, but, uh, but I could do more with that. And that's certainly something I'm looking at. That's great. I, I would think a noise recover or noise um, reduction would be great there because that's one of the problems with that depth effect. If you're in a low light situation, man, those pictures look pretty bad when you zoom in close on them. Which, for my personal use, that's where I'm usually using it. It's like indoors taking a picture of the kid. Right. You know, it's it's low light because you're indoors and uh, just you zoom in. You go, ah, oh, the picture looks really good zoomed out, but you're probably not going to do anything too big with it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, if you could that's get that's a in, great idea. Yes, yeah, sir. Then that'd be very cool. Nice. That is super cool. I love that round so, tripping. That's great that that's all there. Anyway, so that's uh, that's the tour of the app. That's the tour of the app. Well, thank you so much. That is extremely cool. All right, well, in that case, we're going to go ahead and bring up code number five, since this is going to wrap up this segment of the show here. Let's go ahead and bring that up. Everybody's ready. One, two, three, go. There is code number five. Type, type, fast, fast. And uh, somebody out there is going to get that. Um, looks like our stream status just dropped a little bit. Why don't you give it a moment, Ryan, since we've gotten this far through the show before we kill the Facebook stream and see if it recovers. And if it doesn't, in about a minute, go ahead and kill that. So if you're watching this on Facebook and uh, we may be killing this stream, so jump over to YouTube, youtube.com slash photojoseph, and you'll find it there. In the meantime, hopefully someone has got that code right now. We'll see if anybody claims that uh, in, the, uh, in the chat room in a moment. Tells us who won. And... Uh, yeah, very exciting. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for coming on to show this to us. This is great. Congratulations. I know thank the, uh, I'll say if anybody who's watching this who may have downloaded the app on the first day and tried to buy it and had some issues, there were some issues with the in-app purchase system, nothing to do with Nick, but that has now since been resolved. So hopefully, um, hopefully that, I, mean, I can imagine how frustrating that must have been. <laughs> It was quite a Tuesday. <laughs> it was quite a Tuesday. Quite, we were supposed to do the show on Wednesday, but because Tuesday right. had such a, it was like, all right, Dick, don't worry about it. We'll just do the show on Friday. We'll push it off a couple of days. Um, but that's okay because it meant you got to celebrate along with us for the 10K. That's right. For the 10K. Very exciting. So um, hopefully somebody got that five, that fifth code. Let's we'll put it back up on the screen here for a moment just in case uh, no one has because I haven't seen it claimed yet, but type that thing into your app store, purchase that, and uh, and we're good to go. Ryan, why don't you go ahead and kill the Facebook stream since I'm saying that the quality is still dropped down there. We'll see if that cleans things up because it is now about time to go into the little celebratory part of the show where I'm going to open up this fancy little envelope here. Well, YouTube envelope. And we're going to have ourselves a little drink, which means Ryan's going to have to come in here too. But um, let's do this. We're going to do this. Um, should we do this with you on the air too? Why not? So, sure. all right. So anybody who's wondering why, what this is. Uh, so I hit 10K yesterday, right? I hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. 
super awesome. This is a major milestone. You're going from four digits to five. It's like, well, I hit that 10. This is super exciting. <laughs> so now I got, now to get to the six digits, I got a long way to go. I got another 90,000. So if, so you guys out there could tell 90,000 of your closest friends to come subscribe. That would be super awesome. We would super appreciate that. So with YouTube, once you hit, I think it's 100,000, you get a play button. And I don't, I forget what that one's made of, but it's, you know, whatever. You get the play button. That's your first one. And then there's other, there's like the diamond one. And there's, you get into the millions. It's, it gets kind of cool and crazy. They don't give out a play button for 10K, but my wife loves me. And she made me a play button, which is what this is. And this, so I get to, I open this up and see what this is. So we got a little, nice little play button here. Let's see what she's done. It's a nice little envelope. <laughs> and she has made me a wooden play button. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. I love awesome. you. Look at that. Look, it's even wooden on the back. She has paid attention to the details there. It is wood all the way around. That is too much fun. Thank you. So I'm going we'll to stick that, like, put that on the show over here. People go, oh, you got a play button. Wait, why is yours made of wood? That is awesome. Love it. Thank you so much. So with that, it is time to celebrate. I said earlier that when I hit 10K, it would be time to celebrate, and that is what this is. Let's see. What have we got here? Do I have... Uh, let me get the... would be the wrong button. Let's get the right camera up here. Um, where is my overhead? There's the overhead camera. Oh, I need to focus. Let's focus that thing. And focus, come here, stand. There we go. A little bit of a Hudson Bay bourbon. This is kind of, I just bought this the other day. This is, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Don't, don't get excited. Um, this is the first legal pot distilled whiskey to be produced in New York's Hudson Valley since Prohibition. It's a lot of qualifiers, but hey, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. It's delicious stuff. So Ryan, why don't you come on in here and celebrate with us? Um, let me go ahead and, uh, I don't know, Nick, do you have a, a glass you can raise over there? It's a little bit early for this sort of thing. Sure. But, you know, why not give yourself a glass of water or something? Absolutely. get the right page up here, bring Nick back up. Oh, and, uh, don't, don't, it's okay. Just, here, you just, Crouch just, just, right here. you got your water. Look at that. We're going to, we're not going to get crazy here. We're just going to do a little bit here, but come on in. We do have to work after all today. It is still only, what, 1030 in the morning or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to drive. You're gonna, yeah, well, there's that too. All right. So you can know there, there he is. There's Ryan. All right, let's get in there. Everybody's in there. Everybody raising your squeeze in. You gotta get in there. Get in there, the picture. there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I sit on Joseph's lap. We have a bit that. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for bringing Thank us you. to ten thousand. This is huge. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Nick. This is fantastic. Thank you for all the help you. you've done. You've been a huge part of this. I wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun work. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's good stuff. That is really mm. good stuff. How was yours, oh, Nick? Wow. Was that good over there? Is that? Uh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Very pure, wet. Pure vodka you're drinking over there, right? That's what it is. Exactly. Right on. Oh, cool. That. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. Take that one out. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. Hey, um, I think that is about the end of that show. We're going to wrap this thing up here. Let's just pull this thing up on screen just one more time, just in case somebody didn't get it. Um, I don't know if... Uh, oh, wow. Look at that. The, my whole YouTube stream shows that it's gone to wonky as well. So who knows what's going on? I, you just... Uh, if only you had more... There's too many layers between me and you, the audience of which I have no control over. What are you going to do? Okay, so uh, I think that's about it. Before we go, let me just throw up a couple of these these screens real quick again. Don't forget B&H, December 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. Photojoseph.com slash BH will take you there. While we're there, we're going to be doing a little meetup. Photojoseph.com slash NYC will take you there. A couple days later in Indianapolis at Robert's Camera, December 9th from 11 to 1 p.m. And then that evening, doing another little meetup, photojoseph.com slash IND, or just go to facebook.com slash photojoseph, and you'll find the invitation page there. And that is everything we've got here. Nick, thank you once again for coming on today. That was fantastic. Uh, My pleasure. Really enjoyed it. Congratulations on the app. I know it's, uh, it's a lot of blood and tears that goes into these things. Yeah. It takes a lot of work. So thank you for doing this for us. This is great. And I know a lot of people out there are going to appreciate having this capability. And I... I probably knew, I work with so many apps, I probably knew this and just totally forgot that Photos doesn't actually manipulate the raw file. That is, that is shocking. <laughs> I just, <laughs> what? Why wouldn't they? I don't get it. I just don't know. Anyway. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up out of here. Thank you, Nick, very much. Okay. We're going to say goodbye to you. Thank Take you. care of yourself. Appreciate you coming on today. And uh, everybody else out there, of course, thank you so much for tuning in for the live show. If you didn't catch this live, you can every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. We do this live right here at youtube.com slash photo Joseph. We're not always drinking whiskey, but you know, when we hit these big landmarks, it's worth uh, it's worth breaking in. Hope some of you watching live, uh, well, five of you got that code. I don't know if the fifth code ever got redeemed or not, uh, but I'm going to assume that it did. And I guess that's it. Thank you very much again, everybody. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.